Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us here at Canyon Hills. I'm Pastor West. This is my daughter, Giselle, and we're excited to have you uh, joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to continue in our series called I Am, where we're looking at the statements that Christ made in the Gospel of John, saying, uh, first of all, that he was the bread of life, which Micah talked about a couple weeks ago. Pastor Carlos talked about Jesus being the light of the world. And today, Pastor Matt is going to be speaking about Jesus being the gate of the sheepfold. Uh, a couple announcements. We're going back to Parker, Arizona for our uh, annual church river trip. Um, Giselle's actually been going on that river trip since she was two months old. And what can people expect when they go to the river, Giselle? The river trips are always a really fun time to get closer with your church family. Um, my grandpa, Duda, always rips <laughs> us, whips us around on the raft. And um, Pastor... Larry is actually the first one who taught me how to wakeboard on his yellow boat, so you can look out for them there. It's a really fun time on the lake, and you should definitely go. Yep, so we're going to the Blue Water Resort. You can make your reservations. It's going to be uh, July 31st through August 4th. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call the church office and talk to Tiffany. But other than that, uh, you can go ahead and make your um, reservations directly with the resort. Um, the next thing is Long Beach is coming on July 10th. We're going to go back to Long Beach and serve a meal to the homeless. Um, if you would like to participate, meet at the church on July 10th at 345, and we will caravan down. And then um, you can also uh, make donations, either monetarily or if you'd like to help prepare the meal. Uh, Mike Young is going to be the one in charge of that, and you can reach out to him. Um, the next thing we'd like to talk about is youth. There's some exciting things going on, Giselle. Yeah, so we have our Sunday services, 1045 to 1145 every week. And then we also have Tuesday midweek services from 7 to 830. Those ones are a lot more social. Um, we get to hang out and do some Bible study with our great youth pastor, Mark. And then on Sundays is just a great message in small groups. And then we also have summer camp coming up and signups are still open for Hume SoCal. And it's a really fun time. It's something I really look forward to every, every summer. So if you're interested in signing up, you can contact Mark for um, summer camp details. Yep, that's coming up July 11th through the 16th uh, in the San Bernardino Mountains. So pretty close and uh, that's it. Um, one other announcement, um, anyone that has uh, preschool age children or if you know any preschool age children, we do have a preschool program here that has openings for enrollment right now all the way, uh, it's full time, part time from 7 to 5.30 each day and uh, you can call the church and get the information. Uh, the director is Amber and I can help you get in contact with her if you have any uh, needs for childcare. And now we're going to go back into our uh, service today, Pastor Matt is going to be speaking about uh, Jesus in John chapter 10, saying he's the gate of the sheepfold. So stay tuned, and we're going to start worship here pretty soon.
be in person or online. We're just blessed to have you. So let's continue to worship God together. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. You are my portion. You are my hiding.
Good morning, Canyon Hills. Uh, before we continue in worship, just had a couple announcements. I'm Pastor Wes. Um, first of all, hey. <laughs> we are heading to the, uh, thank you, Michael. We're going back to the river um, at uh, Parker, Arizona, at the Blue Water Resort. Uh, they're expect, or the rooms are open for reservations directly with the hotel right now. It's gonna be July 31st through August 4th. Uh, there's a table outside, so please sign up if you're planning to go. For those of you that don't know, um, it's an awesome time. We have about, I think, a half dozen boat owners, sea owners that'll come out and uh, get you on the water if you want to. Um, it's always been a highlight for our family to go ever since our kids were little. Um, up until now as teenagers, they still really enjoy going and it's just a great time of fellowship with the church family. So that's coming up. Um, also, Long Beach is going to be next Sunday. There's a table outside. You can also sign up for that either if you want to go or if you just like to bring food or donate money to the meal. Um, we're going to go down to Long Beach. You can bring the whole family and serve some uh, people in need. And Mike Young is the contact for that if you have any questions or you'd like to sign up. Um, next is youth camp is coming up for our high schoolers. Uh, they're going to be going to Hume SoCal in the San Bernardino Mountains. Uh, Pastor Mark is taking a group. There are a few spots open, so if you are a youth or you know anyone that would be interested in joining the high school group, uh, please reach out to Mark and he can get you set up with a spot there. Um, as we go back into worship, uh, we always have our opportunities to give. Um, there are plates in the back. There's also our website or our app. You can use the QR codes to give as well. So thank you, and let's get back into worship.
grateful for you, God, grateful for your mercy, for your love, for your forgiveness, Lord, for the freedom that you give us to worship you, that we live in a country where we can worship you freely and not have to worry about persecution, God. We're just so grateful for the love that you have for us and that you are just who you say you are, God, that we never have to worry, we never have to question you, God. And we just are thankful that you are the gatekeeper, Lord, that you were at the door waiting for us, God, that you were at the door to protect us, Lord. And I just ask that you be here in this place as we continue to worship, as Pastor Matt comes up and just reads your word, Lord, just speak through him and open our hearts for what you have for us this morning. We thank you and love you more than words can say. In your glorious and precious name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, Canyon Hills. Happy July. Is that weird to say that it's already July and tomorrow is the 4th of July? This year is just flying by, but it's a great Sunday to be here. Welcome to all of you who are joining us online as well this morning. You know, over the past couple weeks, we've been in this series called I Am, where we're taking a look at the seven I Am statements recorded by Jesus in the book of John. And each one of these I am statements reveals to us a new attribute or a new characteristic to clue us in on who God is and who Jesus is. And we learned about three weeks ago from Pastor Micah as he opened this series in John chapter six, that Jesus starts by saying a very profound statement, I am the bread of life, which means he provides all of our spiritual hunger needs. And then Pastor Carlos took us last week through John chapter 8, where we learned that Jesus said, I am light in the darkness. I am the light up and all of these things. And it's telling us that he is our spiritual light. He is the light that pushes out all of the spiritual darkness around us because he's the light of the world. And then today we're going to be looking at John chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles, please open up to John 10. But we're going to look at the next statement. It's maybe a little bit more confusing and obscure, but he says, I am the gate or a door of the sheepfold. And each week you're going to see a different element come up on the wall behind us to kind of help us remember where we've been and where we're planning to go as we learn about these seven I am statements. But in John 10, he starts this morning with this phrase, I am the gate of the sheepfold. And pretty much what he's saying here is that he's not just a shepherd, which we'll learn about next week. He's not just a door. He is the door. He is the only gate that allows us to have this abundant, eternal life. But before we get into that, let's jump into our text this morning to kind of set the stage to help us understand kind of this weird analogy that we read here. So if you look with me at John chapter 10, starting in verse one, it says this, very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And he continues, when he has brought all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. 
Now, right off the bat, this could be a very confusing passage for us because in our suburban culture, we don't just see sheep roaming down Imperial Highway, right? We don't see them just walking along the sidewalks and in the hills, but in Jesus's day, shepherd and sheep were everywhere. No matter where you went, you would always see herds and flocks of sheep scattered all around the countryside being led by a shepherd. And not only that, but Jesus's audience knew a lot of the Old Testament scriptures that liken God to a shepherd. If you remember Psalm 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so this analogy would have been very familiar to them. And Jesus knows this. And so he's trying to paint this picture for them in a context that they would understand. You see the sheep, you see the shepherd, you know the Lord is a shepherd. So he's trying to put all of this together in this beautiful little package for them to understand. But for us, it's a little bit different. It's a little more obscure for us because we don't live in that cultural context. We don't see it as awkward or as frequently. And so it could be kind of awkward to think, what do you mean he's a gate? He's a door of the sheepfold, if you will. And so Jesus kind of does this great job of explaining it in such layman terms that generations beyond when the Bible was written would still be able to be clued in, to understand exactly what he's talking about here. And he starts by talking about the sheepfold or the sheep pen and its purpose for both the shepherds and the sheep. But we need to ask ourselves the question to start off, why do sheep need to be put in the pen? That's going to really help us understand this passage. Why do sheep need to be put inside of the sheepfold? Well, bluntly put, of all the domesticated animals that exist out there, sheep, they need the most help. (laughs) Uh, They are the most helpless when we think about sheep, right? Sheep, they spend all day grazing from one place to another, rarely ever, if at all, looking up. And as a result of that, they can find themselves straying and wandering off from the rest of the flock, from the rest of the herd. And they don't have a homing instinct like most animals do. So if they get separated too far, even if the sheep pen is in sight and they look up, they will have no idea how to get back to it. They will panic. Even though they can see it, they just don't know how to get back there and they become overwhelmed. And sheep would have to listen to the shepherd's voice to call them back to the sheepfold to follow their voice back to safety. Because sheep are followers by instinct. If the first sheep were to walk off of a cliff, what would happen to all the other sheep? They would walk straight off the cliff as well, not knowing that there's danger awaiting them. Sheep are prone to injury. They're prone to attack by predators. If they're in a sheep pen and a wolf jumps inside of it, their natural instinct isn't to flee and to run away. It's to huddle together to make a full course meal for the wolf, right? They just kind of clump together because they don't know any better. They just follow each other. If a sheep is standing and moving water, it will drown. (laughs) And it's this crazy thing because if you look at it historically, when I did research, I found that sheep refuse to drink from water that's moving at any current, that's moving at any speed. It has to be perfectly still. And maybe that helps us understand Psalm 23 when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside what? Still waters. Because that's where comfort That's where peace, that's where safety exists. And so the sheep, they are reliant. Sheep are dependent upon their shepherd. And the shepherd isn't just their caretaker, their comforter, it's their provider. It's the the protector for these sheep. And so close is the bond between a shepherd and the sheep that even in Middle Eastern cultures to this day, if the sheep kind of mingle in the sheep pen with other herds during the nighttime, All the shepherd has to do is come up to the entrance and call to his sheep by name and just their sheep will come out. The rest of them will stay because they know the shepherd's voice. They know the tender compassion and the care and the concern and the protection, the comfort that exists inside the voice of the shepherd because the shepherd's their provider. The shepherd will lead them to the best places to graze. The shepherd will allow them to lie down and find pasture for rest And the shepherd will bring them into the sheepfold or the sheep pen at night to keep them in safety as they sleep. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of a a sheep pen or a sheepfold, I typically think of what we see in movies, like on ranches, right? These wooden fences or these kind of metal fences that surround a property. 
But in Jesus' day, these sheep pens, these sheep fold were made of rocks. There were these large rocks that were stacked on top of each other, only about three feet high, because sheep are helpless. They wouldn't know to jump over it, right? And so there was this three-foot-high wall structure that would line the property in circles or rectangles that the sheep would come and they would find themselves protected inside of. And sometimes the shepherds would put these thorns and thistles along the top to prevent robbers and thieves from jumping over into the sheep pen. But there's two different types of sheep pens that we read about. And this is important as we're still setting up the scene for this message this morning. There's the sheep pen that's found in the, the cities and the towns. They're a little bit of a larger sheep pen, but this is where the shepherds would drop their sheep off if the weather was bad or if they needed to tend to a sheep that was injured. But they would take and they would lead their sheep into these massive sheep pens, and then a hired hand or a watchman would watch over the sheep while the shepherds slept or tended to the sheep that was injured. But if the weather was better, if the sheep were all good, everything was fine, there was another type of sheepfold or a sheep pen that was more in the countryside. And this one was smaller. Typically, they were more round with only one door that would go in and one door that would come out. And so what would happen is the shepherd would allow his sheep to graze during the day. And then at nighttime, he would walk through and lead the sheep into the sheepfold. And because there's only one entryway there, the shepherd would actually lay their body down right in front of the opening. And they would act as a door, as a gate. Nothing would enter in, nothing would exit out. If anything were to come into that pen besides for the shepherd, it would be considered a thief or a robber or a predator trying to steal, kill, and destroy the sheep that are inside of the sheep pen. And so in the morning, the shepherd would wake up and he would stand up from the gate, the entryway, call to his sheep, and then they would all exit through the only way. But inside of this sheepfold, inside the protection of the shepherd who would be acting as a gate, as a door, would be everything the sheep would need. There would be grass. Typically, there would be some water. There might be some shade. It would be the perfect place for the sheep. They could feel safe. They could feel comforted. They could feel provided for. They had an abundance of life inside of the sheep pen being protected by their shepherd. And so Jesus is painting this beautiful picture this beautiful analogy. He's like, I know all of you are going to understand this because you have seen this. Maybe some of you in the readers of this original context, they were shepherds. And he says, you know the dangers of the thieves trying to jump in and stealing the sheep, but you acting as kind of the gate, the door, the boundary, the protector, the provider for everything inside of that sheepfold. But kind of like the sheep, I think his audience is a little dumbfounded. And so Jesus has to lay it out flat for them. And he simplifies it even more. Take a look at this in verses 7 through 10. It says, Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Wow. What a great passage. What a great thing for the people to be able to hear and to understand. Jesus isn't just saying that. He's not starting off by saying, I'm a good shepherd. No, we're going to get to that next week with Pastor Micah. But he starts by saying, I am the gate. I am the door. I am the only way to safety, to provision, to comfort, to this abundant life. You know, I remember the very first time I heard that in my life. It was at another church, and it was by a junior high volunteer. And by the way, just speaking real quick, if you're serving in children's ministry or youth ministry, never underestimate the impact that you have. Even though kids are rowdy and rambunctious and pretend like they don't care and pretend like they hate you, (laughs) odds are somebody's listening. Somebody's really taking to heart what you're saying, the example that you're leaving, the time that you're investing in them, just like it was for me. I remember to this day, my junior high leader, his name was Robert, and he explained this passage to me. And it's a passage that stuck with me even to this day, John 10, 10. I have come that they may have life 
and have it to the full. I have come that they may have life, that I may have life and have it in abundance. I mean, I never would have thought in a million years that God would have come, that Jesus would have come to give me an abundant life. Growing up, I didn't read the scriptures in depth. I didn't study who Jesus was. I just thought that he came to make sure I followed a bunch of rules and stayed out of trouble. (laughs) That I went to church and that I prayed and that I read the Bible. And if we're being honest, all of those things sound super boring and the opposite of a full and abundant life, right? That's not what I wanted. But imagine my surprise when I learned that Jesus didn't come to make me some religious fanatic, but he came to make my life better. That he came to give me everything that I could possibly want and more. Things I didn't even know that I needed in my life. Things I didn't even know that I wanted in my life. Imagine my surprise when I learned that. It changed my life. And I'm not saying that that other stuff isn't important because I think Jesus is alluding to that when he's talking about the sheep. He tells us two key characteristics about his sheep, right? The first is simply this, is that a full life can only be found in Jesus. The sheep know there's only one way into protection. There's only one way into provision, only one way into safety and security, and that's through the gatekeeper. That's through their shepherd who watches out for them. There's only one way. But not only that, the second thing is this, is that the sheep, they know their shepherd's voice. And they don't just follow it. The sheep, they listen for it as well. The sheep are listening for the voice of Jesus. See, having faith is so much more than just believing in God and doing what he says. It's about every single day listening for his voice. Listening to what he may be calling us to do. Because the truth is this. There are so many voices in our world right now. There are so many voices clamoring for our attention. And some of them, they're downright malicious. They lack compassion. They lack comfort. They're trying to set themselves up as gatekeepers and making them kind of their own little sheep pins fleecing the flocks of this world. But they lack the true authenticity of the voice of the shepherd. And the hard part is is sometimes it's difficult for us to hear the good shepherd's voice versus the voices of this world. There are so many other voices and sometimes they're louder and, and we tend to focus in the wrong areas rather than listening for the voice of the only one who can truly provide for us. The only one who can truly give us what we need in this life. The only gate, the only door, the only pathway. I mean, what is a gate to begin with? If he's saying that he is the gate of the sheepfold, what is a gate? What is a door? Well, simply, it's a pathway. It's an entrance or an exit. It's a gateway. It's protection. It's a refuge from the outside elements. See, Jesus is all of these things and more for those who choose to believe in him. And he wants to do that for us. But the hard part is sometimes we forget that. Because there's this theme that's woven all throughout scripture that says you and I, believers, non-believers, we're like sheep. We're prone to go astray. Even though the good shepherd is calling to us and he's inviting us into this safe pasture of everything that we could possibly need, for some reason, when we're here in the blessings, in the provision, in the comfort of Jesus, we're still not satisfied. We're still not happy. Because we see everybody else on the outside and say, I want that. We almost feel like we're being denied something. It's that old school philosophy. Maybe we've all heard it before, right? Where it says the grass is always greener on the other side. Doesn't matter what I have right here that I'm safe. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food. Ooh, they've got something better. They've got a deep fried something over there. I'm going to go this way, right? And we kind of stray and we start to move this way towards those things, completely forgetting this is what we need. This is truly where we're supposed to be, but we see the greener grass and it's like, ah, I, I want that. Yeah, this is good, but I, I, I would really like it if I could try that. And so we start to stray. We start to wander. We start to focus on the negativity right here saying, oh, I don't have this. I don't feel this. I'm not moved in this way. I'm unhappy with where I'm at. 
and we feel like we're being denied of an opportunity. You know, it makes me think of my son, Oliver. He is turning into the little escape artist. Um, between his room and the street, there are now seven different gates or doorways. And let me tell you this, inside of his room, he's got all the toys he could possibly want. He's got water, he's got snacks, he's got a bed, he's got air condition, he's got a heater, he's got a humidifier, he's got, you know, books to read, he's got more than enough toys that, more than enough toys that he could ever possibly have. He's got everything that he could possibly want inside of his room to be happy. But yet if anybody is on the other side of that fence, that gate by his door, even if it's a cat, right? He's like, I want to be out there. I want to be on that side. I want to be over there. Even though I've got everything I need here, I want what's over there. And what he doesn't realize is because he gets really frustrated and he tries to climb over the gates. He tries to push through the gates. Lord help us the day that he learns how to open these baby gates. It's going to be a dangerous day. But he becomes so angry and upset because he wants what's on the other side and he becomes stubborn in it. And he pushes and he pushes and he tries to get through and he reaches through the gates. But what he doesn't realize is that we have put those gates there to protect him. Because if he were to make it out of the gate to his room, do you know what would happen? He would fall down the stairs. And once he tumbled down the stairs, if he made it through the next gate, he would fall out of the house. And once he fell out of the house, he would make it through another gate and he'd find himself standing in the street. Even though he's got everything that he wants, he wants what's on the other side of it. And he pushes through because he doesn't know that we're trying to look out for his best interest. We're trying to protect him. We're trying to keep him safe from thieves and robbers and things that are going to hurt him, things that are going to injure him. But he just focuses on that negativity and he throws a tantrum. I want this. Even though he can't speak, he's like, right? It's just this crazy scene as he wants to go on the other side. And sheep, they're the exact same way. Sheep, they'll be perfectly content for a while in their sheepfold, and they'll be grazing and eating, but as soon as they see that unchewed grass on the other side of the fence, you know what they do? They walk over, and they stick their head outside of the fence. And then once their head is out, and they start to nibble on it, they think, ooh, this is better than what I've got. And once they get that taste in their mouth, here's the danger. Once they get a taste of the grass on the other side, it's all they want. It consumes them to the point where they start sticking their head further and further, cutting up their neck on the barbed wire or on the lines that protect them. And eventually, if the sheep really wants it, you know what it does? It pushes so hard that it will deform its body. It will scratch itself up until it barrels through the gate and finds itself outside of the sheepfold outside of the sheep pen. And once it's out there, it's now prone to danger. And yeah, the shepherd comes and the shepherd will open the gate or the ranch hand and it will call to the sheep, hey, come on back in. I want you to come back into the safety. Everything you need is right here. But in the stubbornness, sometimes the sheep refuse to listen. They can hear the voice of their shepherd, but they choose not to listen. And they keep going and they keep grazing, and soon they find themselves so far from the sheepfold that they're now in harm's way. They're now in danger. How often have I, in my own life, done that? When I have felt that God has given me everything that I need, He's blessed me. He's given me a roof over my head, food on my table. He's given me provision after provision. He shows up every single time, but I get a taste of something. And I'm led astray by it. I start to go after that thing. It almost consumes me to a point where I find myself with it, and then that thing that I was consumed with fades away. It's gone. And now I have to look for something else. Same thing for the sheep. It sees that unchewed grass and it starts to eat it. It's like, this is great, but soon it's ate it and it realizes it's not satisfied. It's not full. It hasn't been fulfilled. It needs something more. So what does it do? It will spend the rest of its life searching for the next thing to bring it temporary satisfaction. Always wandering, 
rather than being in the sheepfold, being in the sheep pen where the shepherd provides everything that it needs. And it would never have to wander if it just stayed. If it rested in the promise that it would find that pasture, it would find that rest, it would find that abundant life that only the shepherd could provide in that sheep pen. How often have I strayed in my own stubbornness, in my own obstinance, and even though Jesus calls to me and I know that that's what he wants me to do, I still find myself over here trying to satisfy my life, trying to fill it with something that's going to bring me a false sense of hope that just fades away. See, folks, it doesn't matter if we're a Christian and we have just started to stray. It doesn't matter if we have been outside the sheepfold our whole life. Jesus is still calling to us today. Jesus is still calling to us and saying, come to me. I will give you rest. I will let you have pasture here. I will give you an abundant life. Everything else only comes to kill and destroy you trying to lead you astray, trying to lead you into harm. I am the only one who can provide safety. That's why he says back in verse nine, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and they will go out and they will find pasture. Jesus is the only way. He is the only door. He is the only gate. He's provided everything that we could ever possibly want and more. We just got to listen to his voice. We just got to hear his call and be willing to follow, knowing that he has our best interest at hand, knowing that he wants to provide for us. And we're going to learn a lot about that next week, about what it means to be a good shepherd. It's not just about leading us into safety. It's about his character as well. But the point that we see here in this statement, and it's so profound So he says, I am the gate. I am the only way to an abundant life. Everything else is just going to give you a false sense of satisfaction, a false sense of hope, something that you're just going to keep butting your head up against, trying to find some kind of purpose, scratching yourself up, harming yourself in the process when you could have been safe all along. And he makes that invitation to us. I'm going to call the worship team to join me back up here on stage as I close this morning, but I want to read this passage again. It's not going to be up there on the screen, but I just want to read it again now that we kind of understand this context to help us really put it in mind. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. So many people are trying to climb into our lives, telling us what to do, how we should speak, what we should think, what we should do in our life. They are just trying to lead us out of the safety of the shepherd. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. Only one gate in that person is the good shepherd. It's Jesus. The watchman opens the gate for him. The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. That's such a beautiful passage because it's never a, hey, here the gate is open, go and now eat. No, the shepherd goes with us. It's a continual state of protection and provision. He never leaves us. His sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. So he says, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever comes before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. That's the warning Jesus gives us this morning, folks. Do not listen to those other voices. Tune your ears to hear the authentic voice of our shepherd. The care, the compassion, the love that he calls us to, not the hatred that exists out there. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture because the thief comes only to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. doesn't matter if you're brand new to the faith, this is your first time stepping into a church, or you've been a Christian all along, 
that promise of an abundant life is available to you. All you got to do is listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow. What does it take to enter into that gate? To believe and to follow. To listen for his voice in the world and to do what he calls us to do. To show love to the people around us. To express the grace and mercy and forgiveness. Everything that the world is telling us not to do right now. But when we choose to do this, he promises that we won't just be saved, we will be satisfied. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of searching and I'm ready to be satisfied. I'm ready to find that abundant life and that provision that only he can give. And that invitation is open for you this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, we, God, we come before you. Father, maybe some of us feel like we're outside of the fold or we've been alienated from you. Father, maybe we have found ourselves in danger of the world around us or lost. But Father, we hear your voice this morning calling to us, offering us this opportunity to come and join you in the fold, to join you in the sheep pen, Father, to be protected by you, the gate, the door, our provision, our refuge, our safety, our protection, Father. Father, I pray that we would stop searching for anything that's not of you. Father, that we would get a taste of who you are and realize that you are good. Father, that you are everything that we need and more. So, Father, I pray that you help us just hear your voice this morning. Hear your voice calling us, inviting us to come back. To find ourselves in you. our gatekeeper, our provider. Father, I pray for those of us who may be hearing this for the first time, Father. I pray that you would break down any, any fear or worry or doubt, Father, but we would just be willing to give it a try. Father, just to come to you in this moment and find the abundant life that you promised to give. Father, help us hear your voice this morning. Pray this in your name. Amen. That said that if we do get out, that God comes for us, that Christ come, follows after us, that when he does go before us, when he leaves the sheepfold, he goes before us. And that when we do astray, go astray, that he is mighty to save, that he comes to follow after you, to come get you. And how amazing that is that he comes specifically for you. To me, that just, I don't know, that just gets me every time. So if you guys want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you're more than welcome to sit. But just let's continue to worship the Lord and think about what, um, what that means about him being the sheepfold.
Thank you for conquering the grave that you are mighty to save. You are so good. We love you. Thank you guys for coming this morning. It's such a pleasure to be worshiping with you. Let's have a great week and we hope to see you guys next week. Have a wonderful Sunday. <laughs>